All right, so SAP BW transports and migration. What exactly are BW transports and why are they important? Transports allow you to move objects from one environment to the next. So in the development environment, it's wide open, nothing's locked down, we can create all the objects based on our design specs. Once we get into the test environment, we're in a different silo. Everything's locked down. You can't create new objects. So if your info cube has a certain number of characteristics that, you're, that you require, and you migrate your transport request into test, and you realize, oh no, I'm missing three info objects for my info cube. I forgot to create them. You can't create them on the fly in test. You're going to have to roll that transport request back. So contact the basis team, which are the SAP system administrators, essentially. And the basis team is going to have to roll that transport back, which removes all those objects that they just migrated into test. And then you have to go back into dev, repackage everything, and start from scratch. So it's very important that you know your transports are good to go before you're actually migrating. And transport requests support auditing. Everything that's inside of a transport request is always tied back to that transport request. There can never be another transport request number. You can't reuse that same number because it's uniquely identified with what it already moved. So as we move on, object ordering. So in BW, as you probably know, there's a ton of different objects that we use in our projects. You have to ask yourself, does this object that I'm moving into this other environment, this upper environment, does it require another object before it's able to function? So for example, say we have an info cube that's made up of 30 or so info objects. If we created these info objects from scratch, they don't exist in the test environment, so they're only in dev. And we try to move our info cube that doesn't exist in test, but it exists in dev. And we move it up to test, and all of a sudden we get this error saying, cannot activate object, missing info objects. So before you actually can move your info provider, your cube that contains the info objects, those info objects must first be in the test environment. Otherwise, the cube can't work. It's essentially like a swimming pool without water. So as you can see, this list here outlines what object must first be in the upper environment before you can begin migrating up the subsequent objects. So you can't migrate up your info queue without your info objects first being there. You can't migrate up a transformation without having both the source and target already up there in that next environment. So it's important to always know the dependencies when you're migrating things. Ask yourself, does this object rely on any other object in order to function? And if you follow this list that's outlined here, you won't encounter any issues when you're activating your transports in the upper environment. So whether it be test or production, they should go smoothly. DTPs and info packages are exceptions to that rule. We don't migrate DTPs and info packages in BW. We manually recreate them in the target environments. And this is because when you're moving from one environment like development to test, the source system connections, so where the DTP source is, is actually changing. It's no longer in dev, it's in test. So it's important to note that the DTPs and info packages, along with process chains and queries, can be built even in a lockdown environment. So DTP, info package, process chain, query. Those four object types can be created if the environment is locked down. So in test or production where you couldn't create an, inf an info object on the fly, you can create those four object types. So in version 7.3 and beyond, you don't really need to keep your objects separated by type. But it's important, regardless, 
that you do this because it allows you to have an extra level of, of organization and you can group all of your objects together and always come back to that historical view of, oh yeah, these objects were moved on this date. And it, it provides you a reference point when you're grouping all of your objects together. So in this example, we have two info objects that are grouped. The transport 001 gets moved by the basis team into the test environment and it, it'll succeed. Now transport two here. So you decided to throw all these three objects together, save some time. What the heck, right? Well, this is going to fail due to a mixed object type. So it's going to go into the test environment and try to activate this and it's going to freak out because you have multiple object types within one transport. Transport 1 and Transport 3 are the way to go here. Keep both separate. So you have your info objects and your transformation alone. You migrate those separately, you're all good. And lastly, make sure to double check your transport request before releasing it. I couldn't count the number of times that objects accidentally snuck into people's transports when you're moving from dev to test and up to production. There was one time where I was working at a client site and a newer user accidentally attached a security role that was supposed to be for a small group of users viewing sensitive financial data. And that got moved along with, I can't recall the object type, I think it might have been an InfoCube transport. But at any rate, that got moved up to production. And all of a sudden people were seeing sensitive financials that they shouldn't have been seeing. Um, all these queries were exposed, all the data was exposed, and that's all because someone fat-fingered their transport that they were prototyping in the development environment and accidentally attached it to someone else's transport that ended up getting migrated up to production. So it's very important to realize what the impact is before you release. Oftentimes people will overwrite your object in the upper environment so if the source object already exists in the target and it's about to be modified, make sure that people know that you're changing this object in the upper environment because of this reason. So if it's an accounting cube, reach out to the accounting department, let them know that you're making this change, you're optimizing this info cube because you need to add this particular characteristic to the info cube and get, go through the proper channels because you can really disrupt a lot of operations if you just go in there and start messing around with the structural integrity of these objects that have already been around. So communication is key and always make sure that you check your transport before releasing it. And what do I mean by releasing your transport? Let's dive into BW right now and take a look. All right, so let's go to transaction SE10, which is our transport organizer transaction within BW. So currently we can see that I have one transport that's been released. And if we hit display here, nothing is modifiable. So I don't have any transport uh, transports out there right now with my name on it that I can use. Let's now take a look at how we move an info object from the development environment to the test environment. We'll top over to RSA1. And I'll just pick a, a random info object here. Okay, so the object that I want to transport is called Brewery. I'm going to double click into it. And then up here we see a little truck icon. And this is the transport icon. So if we click on this guy, it's going to say, okay, well, we've collected this object for you. We want to transport it, so tick this box. And then click the truck again up here to transport the object. All right, so now we're getting prompted for a local workbench request. At this time, we actually don't have any transport requests to assign this object to. 
So we click on our own requests to verify that. Yep, nothing we could assign it to. We'll click the X and let's create a new request. We'll call this BW info object and then our technical name of our info object. And this is just a description. Doesn't have to be anything related to this object name. You can just call it ABC if you wanted to, but for auditing sake and historical purposes, we try to tie it together to whatever we're trying to transport. So I can always do a search on this particular object name and quickly locate this transport. So I added the technical name. If you have a project that you want to associate this with, you can do that there. But I'm just going to go ahead and save this. And now we're given this transport request number 00064. This is our unique transport request. Once I click the screen check, it's going to go out to BW and write that request to my user ID. So now if I pop back into transaction SE10, click on display. So I'm displaying my modifiable transport. And there we can see that my transport description and my transport number are right there, just like we saw on the other screen. And below that, we have something called a task. So a, a transport request is made up of one or many tasks. And the task essentially contains the absolute detail that we're migrating up. So the info object, this is the technical name of that info object, Z B R W R Y underscore C W. That's how BW knows that this is the technical name for that particular info object. And it's going to be moving this up to the next environment. Now, before we can actually move this info object, we have to change it from modifiable to a locked status or released status. And what I mean by released is you're actually exposing this transport request to be moved to an upper environment. Now, let's pretend like I've done all sorts of tests, checks and balances, and I'm good to go. I want to move this up to the next environment. I simply click on the task which is underlying. So you can see here, you can click on this tree. This task here must first be released before I can release this transport request. So click anywhere on this transport task. Click on the, the truck up here to release. Okay, it's been released. You can see here that the color has changed, signifying that it's been released. And once you click this truck and release your transport request, it goes out there into the ether, ready, ready to be picked up by an SAP basis admin and move this transport request to another environment. No one else can add anything to this transport request. It is completely locked down. So if I go back and I'll go back into modifiable again, we shouldn't see anything here because we just released that. So we'll go back, just look at released transport requests. And that's our transport request, ready to be migrated. And I released another one earlier, just so you can see here. So it's showing everything that I've set to be released. And these are transport requests that are ready to go can be picked up anytime and moved to the upper environments. One cool thing about BW73, it actually has built in object dependency checks. What I mean by that is, let's say I wanted to migrate a data store object to production. For instance, the Zebrew 01. I would simply double click on this DSO click on the truck and 
And again, I don't recommend this, but it is possible. It's a best practice to always keep your object types separated within their transport requests. But if you wanted to consolidate it all, if you're just prototyping something, you could try this functionality out. So if we expand this down, we can see that it's collected our info area for us, along with our info objects. So we'll go ahead and check these boxes here, which is going to select all of these info objects and info areas to be migrated up. We'll click on our transport. We'll switch it back to my ID. So this is someone else's object. I'm just pretending like I'm a team lead or a manager that's approving this and I want to be the user ID associated with this particular transport. So it's saying we need a package specified. We'll just go in here and use a generic package. Save. We can't use our own request because there are none out there. We've released everything. So we'll create a brand new one. Zbrew01 move all objects. We'll hit save. We'll go ahead and create that request. And we're getting this message here because we're attempting to move objects with within the zero namespace, which is reserved for SAP. That's okay, we're just messing around here and prototyping. So we'll go ahead and pretend like those don't exist in our test environment. Hit continue. Okay. All right, so our transport has been created. We'll pop into SC10. Check out the modifiable requests assigned to us. And we have our tasks. This one task up here contains info area, info object, and DSO information. And the one down here contains our info objects that are, are, that are within the zero namespace. Now watch what happens if I try to release this top transport without first releasing these guys down here. It's saying referencing task not yet released. Okay. I'll go down here, click the truck to release it. Release the other guy. And now our top level request is releasable. And basically what's going to happen is the basis team can now pick up this transport number and move all of these objects into the test environment. And like magic, they show up when you log into that next system. And that's how you move objects from the development environment all the way up to production.